Yo, what up? It's your boy Mike Rasheed. I'm currently on the road from Las Vegas, Nevada, to Scottsdale, Arizona. I came to Las Vegas to support a really good friend of mine and a really talented boxer. His name is Tevin Farmer, the American dream. Tevin Farmer is a very scientific, technical, defensive-minded, counter-punching uh, boxer. He's very talented. He's uh, he had four losses in his career early in his career because just he just hopped in with no real plan, no management. And when you're in a position like that, people will put you in there with seasoned guys just to build their their records up, and you're not ready. But once he he got his shit together, and he's been on like an 18 fight winning streak, right? So he fights for the IBF World Championship on HBO, which is a big deal for him. He trained his ass off. In the midst of him training, he was at a, I might be saying a story wrong, but I think I'm right, but he was at a, a kid's party with his niece or his nephew. Somebody came in a party on some bullshit and some bullets start firing. He got hit in the hand. What is this guy doing back there? You got a beard? He's stroking your beard? Anyway, he got shot in his hand. Uh, and everybody was like, fuck, that's his money maker, you know what I mean? But he rehabbed it, he was back training with one hand while he couldn't use his hand that he got shot in until he was cleared to use it. And he still came in and fought, no excuses. And he actually beat the shit out of this guy. He won, last night he won a clear decisive fight I can give Ogawa three rounds out of the 12, and it wasn't as if he dominated Tevin in those rounds. It was just that he landed better shots those rounds. And uh, But where I was sitting, I was sitting behind Ogawa's corner, and you see his facial expressions. He was out of gas. When they were clinch and he's facing that corner, he's taking deep breaths. You could see in his eyes, his face, that he was done. And Tevin was full of energy. One thing I respect about Tevin is he stood up in between every round. That's old school. That's some George Foreman shit. He didn't sit down on the stool at all. That's a stand-up stand -up guy right there. That's some, some dope shit. But uh, it just shows his level of conditioning, his commitment to the sport, which is commendable. Now, what I have a huge issue with is the, the scorecard, man. Um, when they're reading the scorecard, uh, the first one was unanimous, unanimously in his favor, which sounded right. The second one was in unanimous, unanimously to the other guy, which shows you right there. There's no way, it's three judges, two, two people can see the fight completely opposite. It's fucking corruption. And then the third one, you know, the bullshit, they gave it to the other guy. There's no, listen, a split decision, there shouldn't be... If there's a split decision, it's the difference should be like a point, a round. You know what I mean? That a split decision, if y'all don't know, is is super close. It's almost a draw, but one guy edges it out. There should no. It shouldn't be a dominant, unanimous winner on any scorecard, right? On a split decision. So you can see the corruption right there. Now, I got up. and I'm standing next to his corner at this point. We're all, we're all on the floor. And Ogawa, you know, and no knock to him. But I'm a, I do have a knock for him. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. But there was a, a group of Japanese businessmen, you know, business suits. And they were sitting in the money section. I call it money section. It's like Golden Boy. Well, all promote, promotions, there's a section of seats that are just the best seats where the camera's facing you, like through the ring. But anyway... You can't buy those seats. Those are given to you. You know, I know because I've been to Golden Boy fights. I, I've been to uh, Mayweather versus Maidana, and I sat in the Golden Boy section with Abner Mades. So I know those seats, and you can't buy those seats. So these guys are sitting there, a whole row of them, or two of them actually, and there was a bunch of people. They had a bunch of their people there, but anyway, once the decision was announced, these guys are so ecstatic. And then I was telling you, like, Golden Boy execs, dudes in suits, came over and started high-fiving them. Like, you, like, you guys good? Like, we good? It's straight bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And Oscar De La Hoya is not a stand-up guy, so it doesn't surprise me. I mean, he's not a stand-up guy by any means. You got to remember, he's the guy that tried to, say, boycott Mayweather versus McGregor. 
this is a sham, this is disrespectful to boxing. And then what does he do? Now he's trying to call out McGregor. Get No, first, before Mayweather had that fight, he said, well, Canelo should fight McGregor. Now he's trying to fight McGregor. That's, bro, stay in your lane, play your position. What are you doing? Like, I have no, my respect for him, it's crazy because he was a fucking legend. He was a phenomenal fighter. But his the things that he's been doing, I mean, from the him dressing up in women's underwear and all the weird stuff that he does to this stuff, that's the easy zone. You want to dress like a hooker, I guess, whatever. But this stuff right here, this corruption, you know, playing with people's livelihoods is not okay. I really have a problem with that. And I'll never say I hate boxing. But I hate some of the people in boxing, people who who condone that kind of shit, man, straight up. If it was a close fight, you would not hear, I would not be making this video right now. But it wasn't a close fight. And I'm an honest person. Just because Tevin's my guy, if he got his ass beat, I would say, you know, he didn't, that wasn't his night. You know what I'm saying? He need to work on some things. But Tevin beat the guy's ass, straight up. And I haven't, you know, I'm at the fight, so I didn't hear the commentary. But guarantee Max Kellerman, Roy Jones, no, not Roy Jones, it's Max Kellerman, Andre Ward, and Jim Lampley. If I'm if my assumption is correct, I'm sure they're all were very upset about the decision because it was not fair. You know what I mean? And um so something needs to be done. There needs to be some kind of oversight with boxing scorecards because you can't have one person see it unanimously for one guy and the other unanimous for the other. This was a clear uh, win for Tevin Farmer. My heart goes out to him because, you know, he worked his ass off and he deserved it. He won. Even if he didn't work his ass off, he won. He beat the guy fair and square. You know what I mean? This affects people's livelihood. So, Tevin, keep your head up, baby. Fuck it. This should ignite fire in your fucking soul to go even harder. You feel me? All right, so check it out. I pulled up the CompuBox uh punch stats so farmer tevin farmer landed he threw 525 punches ogawa threw 445 punches he landed 158 punches ogawa only landed 99 punches so he threw more punches he landed more punches and he landed more punches at a higher percentage than Ogawa, meaning Ogawa lost, uh, missed a lot of shots. Numbers don't lie. Anyway, yeah, I think about this shit, man. We need to make some noise. Um, check out some of the footage. Scientific. 
too scientific. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Ye